Hello, good morning, everyone. Welcome to all of you for today's session. Students, so, uh, just let me know whether you people can hear me. Yes, sir. Can hear you. Good morning. Morning. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Now, just give me two minutes only before I start the class. Because some people have joined today uh, first time, so they are facing some problem with the voice. So let them uh, get the issue resolved. Just a few minutes, please. So what we did in the last class, we will be <coughs> talking about it. Just a minute, please. Let me open the uh, notes where we ended in the last class. So we have discussed MIRR. The last topic in the last class was MIRR, Modified Internal Rate of Return. And yes, so today's uh, task, that is, if I open the course plan, yes. So today's task is to do, here we are, the lecture plan. AFM. Yes, we have done modified internal rate of return. So today 
we have to do the NPV adjustments. Yes. And NOT perpetuity and risk and uncertainty in the investment appraisal. So these are the tasks for today. How many of you revised the last lecture at home? Tell me honestly. I know a difficult question it is. How many of you revised the last lecture at home? Tell me please. Yes. How many of you revised? No one? This is dangerous. Only 2% said they revised. Let me tell you, these things do not work in AFM at least. AFM, yeah, AFM becomes a nightmare if you ignore it. And it becomes very interesting if you study it with routine. Yes. So, please, what I want from you people, what I want from you people, my demand from you is one only. What is that? The demand is that every one of you will make a study plan weekly. Every one of you will make study plan. That what is the time you are going to allocate AFM for self-studies? And in that time, you are not going to do any other thing. Because what, you know, what I know is what happens. What happens after three, four lectures or, okay, seven, eight lectures. Since students do not revise lecture on a timely basis, then they say AFM and, and then they, they do not prepare properly, they attempt exam ultimately. They go, their concepts are not clear. They have not prepared the subject in detail. Only about AFM, it is about every subject. But AFM, I am more concerned because it is my subject here with you people. So what they do is, they say, oh my God, the teacher didn't teach well. This is the first thing, easy to blame teacher, the first thing. And they say, I don't know why I am failing my exam again and again. They can easily figure out. AFM, I told you first day, 140 hours. If you are not ready to study 140 hours, you are at risk at huge risk of failure, significant risk of failure. Because each subject it has its own dimensions, own requirements. Please do not try to pass AFM. Try to pass, I am saying. Try to attempt rather, I must say. Not pass. Try to attempt AFM with the tactics you have used for other papers. AFM is very interesting and very important subject of ECCA. 
this is the the trend i am seeing only two or three percent revise the subject the last lecture this is very dangerous those students who have joined today i welcome them for the first time they are in the live class in my live class today and i urge them every one of you to make a schedule allocate time for self study that this is the time two hours example on saturday these two hours these two hours not any two hours when you say any two hours that will not work specific plan at that time you will switch off your phone paste that schedule on the study table so that everyone should know that mr or miss this is studying right now you cannot approach him or her class now here the whole my family and friends you know mr hamza is unavailable he will not be available this time they know well until unless some extreme emergency arises happens god forbid so your study plan how much importance you are going to give the same result you are going to get so i will be waiting you will be every one of you will be preparing study plan for yourself and sharing with me via whatsapp in the private message here is my whatsapp number you people know yes this is my this is my you sometime my team is managing it as well they have it access to it when um, i'm quite busy but i will be attending your your text messages okay students i'll be waiting for your study plan then is you are here to study with me and i want all of you to pass your paper in june 2022 not later than that now next let us proceed further so npv and adjustments npv and adjustments i will link my ipad with it Yes. Just a minute, please. yes so here we are so students there are three adjustments of there are three adjustment in the npv npv and inflation first adjustment so then what is inflation is in price level that is called inflation and here when we are talking in afm inflation is of two types general inflation and specific inflation general inflation and specific inflation general inflation we we'll talk about it later first specific inflation for example we say wheat price increase floor price 
Again, welcome. So floor price increase by 10%. So this is the this is the specific inflation of rice price increase by 7%, specific inflation. Wages increase by percent specific inflation. General inflation. It is the weighted average inflation on a bucket of items. And it is calculated by authorities. Authorities calculate that. Yes. Authorities. Normally, that may be central bank of the country. Or that may be the, sometimes there is a bureau of statistics in the country who has the responsibility to calculate different trends and publish for the for the public sector and the government and other, other institutions to be able to make some decisions. To general, for they say, the, in the country inflation is 7%. Average inflation in the economy, general. So with the project investment, project investment appraisal, When we talk about that, inflation has impact on two sides. One is capital and cash flows. Cost of capital and cash flows. So cost of capital is this discount factor of two types. One is nominal money cost of capital. The other is real cost of capital. Real cost of capital is real cost of capital is without the cost of capital without effect of inflation. Money cost of capital. Sorry. It is with includes effect of inflation. It includes the effect of inflation. Money cost of capital or nominal cost of capital. Students, what is the linkage between the both? Students, there is a Fisher's formula. It tells the linkage between the both. Fisher's formula. It tells the linkage one plus M is equal to one plus one plus H. M is equal to money or nominal cost of capital. I is equal to real cost of capital. And H is equal to, remember, general inflation. General inflation. Now, next, let us proceed further. For example, general inflation is 
that is 5% real cost of capital that is 9.5% what is the money cost of capital we can calculate 1m is equal to 1 plus i 0 0.095 into 1 plus r h minus 1 you can calculate it simply answer will be there Now, come to the cash flows. Is it clear so far? Any question? Tell me, please. Yes, clear, sir. All right, let us proceed further. So cash flows. So cash flows, I, the second point is cash flows, inflation. Cash flows are also two types, nominal or money cash flow. The second is real cash flows. Real cash flows. The same story, they are also called current flows in current terms. They are without inflation. It includes the impact of inflation, includes inflation. Now, so when we talk about NPV and inflation, so basically why we are studying these types? The point is, there are approaches to calculate NPV, two approaches. One is real approach, nominal approach real approach we calculate net real cash flows of project the first step means real cash flows which are without inflation calculate net cash flows so the second is calculate Present value of the net cash flows using real cost of capital. Yes. The next point. Nominal approach. First of all, convert all real cash flows to nominal cash flows using specific inflations specific inflation of each cash flow for example selling price inflation will be different might be variable cost inflation might be different fixed cost may be different so, so whatever the inflation each item has that inflate using that and calculate real cash flows 
The second point. Calculate the value of cash flows using nominal cost of capital. Nominal cost of capital. That is nominal approach. Let us proceed further. So NPV and inflation adjustment we have discussed already. Next, the next second adjustment that is NPV and taxation adjustment. Again, impact on cost of capital, impact on cash flows. So on the cost of capital, impact, impact on cost of capital. Remember, always use post tax cost of capital unless stated otherwise. Always use. Always use post tax cost of capital unless stated otherwise. Now, next, how to calculate post tax cost of capital? equal to pre-tax cost of capital one minus tax rate one minus tax rate now one minus tax rate For example, pre-tax cost of capital is fourteen percent. Tax rate is twenty-five percent. What is tax of capital? What is that? Fourteen percent one minus point two five. Simply, you can calculate that post tax very easy. Now, next, so impact on cash flows are quite important and comprehensive as well. Impact on cash flows. There are basically two impacts. One is tax payment on stable cash flows. Tax 
tax payment on taxable cash flows. And the second is, that is tax saving on capital allowance. Saving on capital allowance. So, of course, the company, the project's cash flow, they have to pay tax on that. And that tax payment, it may be payment in the same year cash flow, cash flow is occurring, or in years, one year in a year. Year one, tax is being paid in year two. Four, five, and so on. So we know that how tax is calculated simply. So for this, I think I should move to the Excel sheet. Yes. I should move to the Excel sheet. So just a minute. Let me open it and uh just a minute, please. Yes, here we are. Yes. Now, so we are discussing taxation adjustment, NPV and taxation adjustment. So cash flows. So what we do actually, for example, this is year one, two, three, four, and five. For example, sales are one, two, make it three year to make our life easy because we have to understand the concept. Sales Now, less cost, variable and fixed cost both. That is 10,200 and uh, 11,300 and uh, 12,900. Now you see here, we have to pay Tax, taxable cash flows. This minus this. Simple this. For example, taxes thirty percent in the same year. So tax thirty percent. So for this better us for us we can do it bold so that in the doing calculation we may not include the above cash flows once again equal to this multiplied by 0.3 i normally put minus in the start over here why because it shows it is a negative cash flow tax payment just see here 30 percent and so on has been done. This is the simple example. So it is the tax payment on tax on taxable cash flows. Yes. This is quite clear, very easy. 
The second is tax saving on capital allows. There are two ways to calculate it. We need to learn the both. What you have studied in F9. We in the P4 AFM, we use some other methods where you feel like you are doing AFM. Yes. Now, next, just see here. This is the second adjustment. For example, initial investment in the project that is that is 12000 tax save uh, sorry their tax rate is the same 30% and 30 in the same year Capital allowance can be capital allowance is claimed at twenty five percent reducing balance basis. And scrap value. Now, I assume same cash flows over here. Sorry. Sales are here. Yes. Plus costs. Same are here. Year one, two, and three. Now, just see here. This is the data available. Focus, please. What we have to do, we need to go in the working. Capital allowance. This is the method one we are using. This is the method one, which is also preferable method. See here, year one, two, and three. So WDV, return down value of investment at the start is the same, 12,000 at the start of year one. So capital allowance. Capital allowance equal to this multiply by 0 0.25, 25% reducing balance basis. There it is. So what is the, what is the written down value next year? Next year start, this minus this. Written down value. Here it is. So this multiplied by 0.25 once again next year. So written down value is this minus this. Is it clear so far to everyone? Tell me. Yes. Yes. What should I assume about others? Two persons told me it is clear. Yes, it's what good. Thank you. It's clear. Yes, sir.
Good. Now, so students, just see here. In the final year, since it is the reducing balance basis, this is the written down value minus the cap value. Final year, reduce written down value minus the cap value. Here, this is the capital allowance. Now, so you see here, capital allowance will be deducted here. minus in the start of the cost as well automatically yes costs are deducted here just see here minus this this here it is so taxable from here taxable taxable profits rather not cash flows here because capital allowance has been deducted taxable just see here tax payments same year this minus minus sign 0 0.3 30% into this There you go. Uh, so now you see here. The next thing, so just we have to do it bold. Remember, add back capital allowance. Because we just deducted capital allowance here to calculate tax. The tax amount is reduced. Taxable profit is reduced because of this. As tax payment is reduced. Now we simply add back. Simply add back. Capital allowance to it. Now these are the net cash flows. Sum from here to here. These are the net cash flows. I repeat. We deducted capital allowance before calculating taxable profits. So the taxable profits are reduced by that. Hence, tax payment is reduced. And then we added back that because they are the, so because tax payment is already reduced. Now add back the capital allowance. You get cash, cash flows. Yes, sir. Yes. Good. There is another method, method two. But you should know this as well, being an AFM student. So, sales less costs just see here taxable cash flows equal to this plus this. We have to pay tax here tax payment 30 percent minus 0.3 into this
Yes. Now, just see here. We have to do a third working here. We have to do all this working the way we were doing. The same working here. Like this. Now, tax saving on capital allowance. This into point three tax saving tax rate. What we did capital allowance each year into tax rate. Yeah, simple is that. So, this is the method two working for method two. So tax saving on capital allowance. Simply, this is cash inflow. Yes, so net cash flows. Some from here to here. You just can see cash flow same, same, net. So taxation adjustment is also done. Any confusion, anyone? Any question before I proceed? Everyone should say it is clear or any question, whatever you say. I want to hear from every one of you that whether you people can speak or not. Because majority people do not speak, only 10% of you speak. Yes, sir, it's clear. Good. What about others? I want Good, to sir. Speak. Is that clear? So it's fine. Fine. It's fine. It's clear, sir. Yes, what about others? What I can do to make others speak or drop a tax in the chat box? What can I do? How many of you have joined the WhatsApp group of class? Uh, me. Because I this the problem is uh, majority of you have not joined. So I will give you the number of coordinator. If you have not joined, that joining is very important because I will be sharing these accent sheets over there after each lecture from today onward. So I will wait today. Do join it today. Tomorrow I can share the Excel sheet for today and the last class. So I will just type the coordinator's WhatsApp number. You drop him a message and ask him to add you over there. In the FM group for the June 2022. It is... Yusuf, you didn't hear me, what I'm saying. I said you, the, the coordinator has sent you email. Well, a WhatsApp link, but you people have not joined it.
this is the WhatsApp number of coordinator. Plus nine two three four five one seven five four eight double three. Okay, use this one then. Drop a text to him and tell him that WhatsApp link is not working. You said us. Okay, add us in the. Three four five one seven four eight double three. Everyone, it is mandatory to join the class groups. Otherwise, you will miss the thing which I will be sharing over there. Now, next. Let us proceed further. Yes, working capital adjust. The third adjustment is working capital adjustment. Working capital adjustment. Student working capital. Remember the first assumption is all the working capital injected through the life of the project. Will be recovered at the end of project at the in the final year of the project remember this is an important assumption yes Now, next, in the final year of project, for example, working capital can be, adjustment can be there in two ways. In two ways, it may be there. The one is, example one. So the first example is here, that is working capital of 1000 will be required at the start of project first year. And then the requirement will increase by 5% per annum. For example, project has four year life, year zero. At the start of the project first year means what is required? Required here, year zero. Start means, start of the year means in the previous year. Start of the year means in the previous year. Now, you see here, working capital to this into 
the requirement will increase by 5%. We have done 5% here. You just see here. Here. Simply you can drag it here. Remember, the last year we will not do it here in this case. Just see here. So incremental working capital. Initially, outflow requires negative 10,000. This is the level required. The next year, level required. It is already there. We need this. We need this. So additional required is minus 500. This is outflow of minus indicates that this has to be injected. The next year, level is this. We have to jump to this. Go on. This is the benefit of Excel. Even we could have done for uh, the first circulation and apply formula. Just see here. Minus y negative. Oh, this is the level we have to reach. We are here. We have to do outflow and reach that level of working capital in the business. Now, the whole up till now, what is the outflow? That will be inflow. Incremental working capital. This is that. We have to calculate. Now this will go to the NP performer before net cash flow here. Any question? Anyone, any question? Please let me know. Uh, the working capital is added after the tax deducted. Of course, right? of course, of course, of course. It must have to be there because in the tax calculation, it is cash inflow and outflow. It is not profit or cost. Okay. Tax is always on the taxable profits. Sales minus costs. Working capital is not a cost. It is being just injected and it will be recovered at the end. Thank you for your question. I appreciate that. It enhances the, it enhances the clarity of others as well. I appreciate. Now, example two. Working capital of 10% of sales is required at the start of project. Simple. For example, sales are as follows. Sorry, term sale in start of, oh my God, every year. Every year. These are the sales. So working capital start this year zero. For year one, the start will be in 2.1, 10%. Simple. Because for year four, it will be in year three. Here. Now, let's see here. Incremental working capital. Initially, the full outflow. Now, this is the level we required. Again, this is already the level. This. 
total outflow is 41,000. That will be inflow here in the final year. Networking capital. I repeat, we calculated 10% of the working capital. These are the levels. And then incremental working capital. Here. And so on. I hope it is clear to you people. Yes, sir. So adjustments have been done. Now the next term is annuity and perpetuity. So I will talk about annuity and then perpetuity. Yes. The next topic is annuity and perpetuity. So annuity. Students, so far, is it clear? Working capital adjustment, is that clear? Yes. 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 Fine. Yes. yes. Now, so annuity, what is annuity? Series of cash flow with constant amount at constant interval for limited period of that is called NOD. Same amount every year. Limited period means known period, you know, 10 year, 20 year, 3 year, 5 year. So that is called NOD. Students. I will take a short break, seven minutes break, and I'll be back after that. So you also just refresh yourself and then we will proceed.
now next so students the next is annuity we were discussing so how to calculate present value of annuity yes so for example this is the year one two and three and four twelve thousand same cash flow every year this is nod so present value equal to annual cash flow into nod factor and nod factor will be available to you in the nod table in the exam it will be available in the exam platform and i will take you to people to you people in the exam platform so i will take you people now so students annual cash flow is 12000 into annuity factor for example cost of capital is 10% so annuity factor if you see that is 3.79 for 4 years From the annuity table, just a minute. Let me open the. Yeah, here we are. Yeah, it has the annuity table here. Yes, ten percent. Sorry, three point one seven. It is all right. So three point one seven. Equal to yes. This this is the present value. That's it. So annuity is of three types. One is called annuity, where cash flow starts from. Year one, next year means this is simple annuity. We have done the same. This is the present value of simple annuity. The formula it is then is annuity due or. Cash flow starts after year one. Starting from year two, three, four, five. My God, this is delayed. The starts now or from year zero. I'm sorry. I was explaining annuity delayed. Example: Year one, two, three, four, three. Okay, year zero, four. Just see here. You say twelve thousand. These are the cash flows. So present value. If we forget it, for example, we say it doesn't exist. This is simple annuity, and present value is equal to annual cash flow into annuity factor. But for there is year zero as well. This is this formula is for these four years. Simple annuity formula, but there is year zero as well. So the formula becomes for year zero discount factor is always one. So one plus annuity factor. This is the formula for annuity due, annuity advance, 
to 12,000 into 1 plus 2.170. Two point one seven. we already know the annuity factor for four cash flows, four years. Next. NOT. NOT. Delayed. Or deferred. The third type. Where cash flow starts after year one means which can start from year two, three, four, five. Let us learn an example. One, two, three, four, five, six, for example. And cash flow is starting from here. Three. Now, cost of capital is the same. Now, how this is delayed at no T. For example, we assume is year one. We assume this is year one. This is year. This is year two, and three and four. Then this is simple and naughty. So present value is equal to. So present value is equal to. Formula. Well, cash flow. Into, and naughty factor. For four years, four cash flows. So we solve it. The answer will fall here. This then this will be considered as year zero. Let me copy and paste it here. Yes. Then this is year zero. The answer will fall here. But we have to take answer here. Answer will fall here. We solve it. We say 12,000 into 3.17. This answer falls here. We have to take it to year zero. So multiplied by discount factor. Multiplied by. 1.1 .1 raised to power minus 2. Year 2. Present value of delayed NOT. First, we consider it is simple NOT. We apply the simple NOT for formula. And then we say, oh no, this is year. Answer is falling in year 2. One year back. Now we take year 0. The discount factor.
Now, So annuity is done. Then is perpetuity. So three types of annuity we have done. If there is any uh, question, you please feel free to ask. Now, the next point is, students, perpetuity is a series of cash flow with amount for at constant interval for unlimited period of time is we say foreseeable future So this is the this is the difference between annuity and perpetuity. This line is the difference. It makes difference. You see here, it makes the difference. Now, so then for example, let's say you will start getting five thousand next year, and so on. Year one. And for unlimited period of time, in unlimited period of time, cost of capital is 12%. So, so perpetuity factor, present value is equal to annual cash flow into Perpetuity factor, which is basically one over R five thousand into one divided by point one two. Now, here it is. Next. The next point is, this is simple perpetuity. This is where cash flow is starting from year one. Simple perpetuity. The next is perpetuity due or advance.
due or advance where cash flow starts now zero and unlimited and so on unlimited the so same formula present value how simple it is this so annual cash flow for year 1 1 will be added as discount factor that's it simple cash flow into One plus one over R. One plus one over R. So students, just see here. Annual cash flow five thousand into one plus one divided by point one two. Here it is. Now, now next students. Perpet deferred or delayed perpetuity. Or delayed perpetuity. Same, where cash flow starts after year one. What is that? For example, five thousand starting from year four, unlimited. Approach present value is equal to annual cash flow into one over R perpetuity factor. Simple but my answer will fall in year three. So one discount factor here five thousand into. One divided by point one two R into one point one two raised to power minus three because answer will fall in year three. We have to take that to year zero. Now, 
next. Okay. Here it is. And there is a third type of perpetuity. That is perpetuity with growth. Students in the perpetuity with growth. Remember, this is this is we utilize where cash flow star grows with a constant rate in the foreseeable future. Uh, two cases may be there. Case one. So basically formula, first of all, present value is equal to annual cash flow, sorry, CF1 divided by R minus G. CF1 is cash flow in the first year of R is the cost of capital, discount rate. G is the growth rate. Students, are you people with me? Yes, sir. Tell me, please. Yes. 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 Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let us proceed further. Let us proceed further. Now, so ends CF1, example. Example one. Mr. X will be receiving as from 2022 an amount of 25,000 every year. Cost of capital and it will grow Four percent per annum words. Calculate present value of the amount to be received if cost of capital is twelve percent. Very easy. The CF1 means next year. 2022 is the next year. Still starting right now. So start next year. Divided by R, 0.12 minus growth rate, 0 0.04. Here it is. Students, six to seven hours per week. I want schedule from you people. How you will be doing self-study? 
Yes. Example two. Mr. Z just have received forty thousand, and it and the amount will grow as from next year by 7% per annum for foreseeable future. Cost of capital is 14%. Calculate present value of future cash flows. Future cash flows. Just received. Yes. Number two. Now you see here, CF1 is not available. In the next year. One. The first year for patch just received this. So how to calculate? So CF1 is equal to CF0 into 1 plus G, means growth rate. The formula becomes present value is equal to CF0 into 1 plus G divided by r minus g this formula so i have put in this formula cf1 instead of that cf0 into 1 plus g so cf0 40000 into 1 plus growth rate 0 0.07 divided by r minus g for minus point zero seven next. So this is here present value of perpetuity with growth. Any confusion, any problem? All okay. So NOD perpetuity both done. Now is the term of the next topic is risk and uncertainty in the investment appraisal. I fear we will not be able to complete it, but I will of course start. We have one hour and 15 minutes. We will do the maximum we can. Risk and uncertainty, what is the difference? So I will add the new sheet. Risk and uncertainty. Remember, there are in the risk and uncertainty, in the both cases, there are different possible outcomes which are likely in the future. Same point here. Same case. And the risk probability can be assigned based on past experience. 
then what is the chance of the option A, B, C? So hence, it can be quantified. Can be quantified. When you can, when you can assign probability, you can quantify that. No probability can be assigned. Uncertain situation, don't know what will happen. Yes, and not be quantified. So techniques to address risk, probability analysis. These are also called expected values. Very easy to calculate. Probability analysis. That is value at risk of P4, which you have not heard it before. Very, very interesting topic. Lovely topic it is. The next is Risk adjusted discount rate. Discounted payback, which we have already done. And uncertainty, there is sensitivity analysis. There is simulation model. Yes, two models are there. Let us start with fatality, sensitivity analysis. So I will go to the notes. Here we are. Sensitivity analysis. What is sensitivity analysis? We will discuss that. Actually, this analysis, it measures how sensitive is the NPV of a project. change in a specific variable. For example, that if selling price changes, how responsive is the NPV? Sensitive or responsive? How quickly NPV changes? If variable cost change, if discount rate change, how sensitive? We know that if NPV is positive, we say accept the project. And if NPV becomes zero, Before turning to negative, the project doesn't remain worthwhile. Now, next. So, so then, how it is calculated? I will elaborate it further with the example. Sensitivity formula is here. 
nan pv of the project divided by present value after tax present value of the variable example selling price sensitivity nan pv divided by present value after tax sales variable cost present value after tax variable cost fixed cost sensitivity towards sales volume contribution npv divided by present value of after tax contribution scrap value present value of investment sensitivity with tax yes without tax present value of investment present value of investment minus present value of tax saving on capital allowance yes we do that this is very much important in p4 it has been tested once present value of investment minus present value of tax saving on capital allowance and then you can calculate so let us learn it by example so the formula we can write here npv divided by of after tax variable now next the next is sensitivity of npv towards sales we have to calculate i will take assumed figure for example npv of the project is 25000 for example and sales is as follows for example cost of capital is let us make it 10% we have to calculate this sensitivity so first of all a tax rate 25% 25% is the tax rate and for example just see here after tax sales is into 1 minus tax rate there it is yes now present value at the rate of 10% this into 1.1 raised to power minus this there you go so present value the sum from here to here and p we have already calculated above so you see present value of after tax variable it is done so sensitivity divided by this multiplied by 100 as well it is 3.24% how to interpret it sales are inflows inflows right how to interpret it if sales fall by 
3.24% NPV of the project will become zero. Now, next, the next point, students, any questions so far, please ask. Um. So, sir, the 3.24% means that that small change will will make the NPV zero. So if the percentage was bigger, then it won't be, it would take more to make the NPV zero. That's correct, right? I think that's a good point, actually. If uh, sale fall by 3.2%, maximum, this is the margin. Yeah, so um, my question is, the smaller the percentage, the chances of NPV falling is bigger. Actually, the more risky is the variable. You have to watch, you have to be careful. More critical is the variable. Okay. Is it clear to everyone? Tell me, please. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Now. Next. The next point is. So students. Write some more data for you one eighty five thousand one ninety nine thousand two oh one thousand two fifteen thousand this is the variable cost using all this information everyone calculate sensitivity of project towards variable cost. Be quick. Be quick, everyone. Give me answer.
I'm waiting for your answer. Five point two eight. I need answers from all of you. It will not work like that. I'm saying again and again, only 10% or 20% of the people are responding to my questions. Other people are sitting in the class. If you're not working, it will not help you. Let me tell you. You have to participate. At least I should know that you are working. No. Okay, so of course, post tax, you have to calculate into one minus point three. Yes, here it is present value. One point one two, sorry, one point one raised to power minus this raised to power minus this yes so present value total is equal to sum from here to here and sensitivity yes that is equal to NPV divided by this 5.79%. Why? 
Uh, because the tax you take thirty percent instead of twenty five. Oh my God! Sorry, I will do point two five. My mistake. Yes. And the NPV, the cost of capital is ten percent instead of eleven. Yes. No, I use ten. No. What happened to me? Oh my God! Yes, five point two eight percent. Thank you, dear. What happened to me? Two mistakes. Thank you. So five point two eight percent. Thank you. So now, so sensitivity towards towards contribution now uh, towards sorry sales volume. Students, this is sensitivity. This is sales or sales price. Same way or selling price. It is sensitivity towards towards variable cost. How to interpret it? Can you tell me? What well, five point two percent, eight percent? What is the meaning of it? So, any change, uh, if uh, the variable cost changes by five point two, forty five, uh, increase by five point two eight percent, NPV will become zero. Exactly. If variable cost. Exactly, if variable cost is increased by 5.28%, NPV will become zero. Or, in order to bring NPV zero, variable cost has to increase by 5.28%. So, towards sales volume. Calculate contributions sale minus variable cost. For sales volume, we need to calculate sales minus variable cost. So, contribution. Yes, simple. Drag it. Here you go. Here you go. Now calculate post tax contribution and calculate its sensitivity. Be quick. I'm waiting for your answer.
Nou. Post tax contribution. Sorry. Post tax contribution. This into one minus point two five. Present value, this into 1.1 .1 raised to power minus this. Present value, sensitivity. Yes, equal to NPV divided by eight point three seven percent, three eight percent. Yes. So if sales volume fall by this, contribution fall by this amount, then NP will become zero. Yes. Now, students, this these were easy and straightforward, but there are some other tough things as well. That is sensitivity of NPV towards project cost. Towards cost of capital or discount rate. How? We calculate IRR first. So sensitivity is calculated that is equal to IRR minus cost of capital divided by cost of capital. Yes, how it is calculated. For example, one, two, three, and four net cash flows. I take assumed figures. I take assumed figures 30,000. 25,200, 9,000, and 19,000. And uh, here we can have your zero. The cash investment is, that is 25,000. Uh, make it 35,000. Yes, here are the net cash flows. So NPV, first of all, we need to calculate. Uh, sorry, we have not to calculate NPV here. IRR, yes. Cost of capital is, for example, that is 10%. So IRR. Fifty-six percent. Really? Let us increase cost a bit. We don't. We can't afford it. <laughs> Okay, now it's good. 22% is IRR. Yes, see here. IRR is the return from the project. This is the cost which has to be paid. So sensitivity is equal to IRR minus cost divided by cost. So you see here, so if cost of capital increases by 120%, the 
become equal to IRR. Or increase to IRR. Then NPV will become zero. NPV of the project will become zero. Yes. Let us proceed further. The sensitivity of NPV towards project life For this purpose, we need to calculate discounted payback of project. Taking all this data here, cash flows. Cost of capital is 10%. So present value at 10%. Cost of capital. This into 1.1 raised to minus power minus this. Minus this. Here we go. Now discounted payback. So cumulative cash flow. Cash flow. Yes. Negative this. In the first year, we get this. Second year, we get this. Sorry. Now, two year complete. Oh no, third year as well. This plus this. So, three year complete. And how many, how much of it? Equal to 139 divided by this. So 3.01 year. One year, yes. Just see here. We have calculated discounted payback. Now, just see here. Sensitivity will be equal to project life minus discounted payback divided by project life. You see here, project life is four years minus discounted payback, 3.01 divided by four. 24.75%. What does it mean? The meaning is that if project life is reduced by 24.75%, NPV will become zero. NPV will become zero.
is this clear to everyone yes 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 sir yes sir students you see here sometime examiner says how much sales must fall for example they say annual sale normally then that is annual sale is fixed annual sale is for example 20 million they say how much and for example sensitivity we calculated that is 11% they say how much sales fall to make an pv zero they asked they say calculate the amount of sensitivity sensitivity in terms of amount or calculate sensitivity terms of amount eleven percent for example twenty million into eleven percent first we calculate percentage then eleven percent this is the amount of sales should fall to make NPV zero simply multiply with the amount they ask for the amount sometimes so and of course i'll be doing some question with you from the past paper about it now it is done friend sensitivity analysis have some drawbacks you can note down even they are mentioned in the notes i think they should be mentioned here advantage not complicated easy to understand it identify critical critical variables which should be monitored Yes, critical variables. The twenty five part drawbacks. The first drawback is it assumes that variables can change independently. We are considering each variable one by one. Rather, in fact, variables are interdependent. If cost increases. Sale will also increase. Selling price will also increase, right? Nor normally it happens. If overall raw material price is increasing, other price is increasing, so wage rate will also increase. Labor cost will also increase. Now, it tells how much percentage if it it change and P will become zero. But does not tell what are the chances of that change. What is the probability of that change? And of course, it is giving us that this is the critical variable. But now, what to do with that? How to manage it? How to tackle it? Optimizing technique. It provides information on which that decision should be taken. But what should be the decision? 
if you fall by 3% NPV will become zero. Now what to do with sales? No answer by it. And there may be some factors. For example, sale may fall because of the customer taste change, technological change, on which the company cannot do anything. Yes. So we have done sensitivity analysis in much detail. Now the simulation model. Simulation model I will discuss and uh, probability analysis uh, and value at risk. We will do it in the next class. So the last topic for today is simulation model. And that will be enough for you to prepare at home. I'm telling you, if you are not going to prepare it this week, you will be suffering, let me tell you in the next class, because in the next class, I will complete capital rationing and I will go for the past exam question. Last lecture and two days lecture, you must have to prepare before next class. Please, be fair with yourself. I'm sorry to say. Yes. Next. Simulation model. Simulation model can, you know, we say that it's consider only one variable. Independently. Isolation. Simulation model consider all, it is also called Monte Carlo simulation. Monte Carlo is the name model. It, it consider all variables at the same time. Consider specify variables market size, growth, share, investment, residual value, etc. Specify the relationship between them to calculate NP. For example, sales, market size, market share, and selling price. Net cash flow, sales minus variable cost minus taxation, etc. This is the relationship. And then simulate the environment and computerize formula. And the range of NPVs are calculated. NPVs. Probability distribution. You know the normal distribution? How many of you know the bell shaped normal distribution? How many of you do not know? Then I will draw and explain. You know it? Tell me. Fine for me. Do not know. Okay, I will draw it here. Try to draw with mouse hair. Otherwise, I have to connect iPad. Sorry. Just see here. It is like that. Yeah? Bell shaped. So, range of N, uh, NPVs are plotted over here. So, I, here is some. We take a mean. Yes, like that, you know. So this is, so many NPVs are plotted. Average is calculated. You can, you see here, so many, means all variables changing at a time, different option, possible option. So simulate the environment and computerized model will calculate all that at all probability levels. So variable you identify, relationship, sale minus cost, cost minus fixed cost is equal to taxable profit. by Tax rate, you know, formulas, basically, we establish in the Excel, same formula, relationship. Have you got the understanding of these three points? Steps in simulation? Tell me, please. Have you got the understanding of it? These three steps? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.
All right, let us proceed further. Now, the next point is merits of simulation. Consider all, all outcomes. Easily understood, I don't agree. Wide application. Model is complex. Cost may be high, benefit may be low. Distribution, normal distribution is difficult to formulate. Data, which we are using, again, that is, may not be reliable. Now students, I would suggest you, please in the next class, all of you must have to prepare these two lectures. Yes, what can I do is over here, I can try to share the WhatsApp group here in the chat box. You can copy that and paste in your mobile phone or somewhere where you can join. So that uh, it may not take you more time before you join the WhatsApp group of the class. Let me, yes, just a minute, please. Yes, if you have not joined the group, here is the group link. You can join. Yes. So students, uh, thank you for joining me today. Uh, the next class is very critical, I'm telling you. And we are going to meet next week. All right, thank, thank you. you, sir. Take thank care. You. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye.